morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earth and Vessels channel. This is a channel for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. Glory be to God for another day and for his holy word. And for those of us who speak English, of course, the King James Version of the Holy Bible is the word of God. So as you can see, my sisters, I want to talk to you about being tired. Are you tired? Sometimes I get tired. Do, do, is it bad to be tired? Sometimes no, it's not bad to be tired. Even Jesus Christ was tired sometimes. We know that there was a storm and he was in a ship on the sea with his disciples and he was asleep in the back of the ship on a pillow. Jesus Christ suffered as we suffer in the flesh, but he was without sin. So we do understand that being a person, a human being, our flesh gets tired, and this is not necessarily a bad thing. As a matter of fact, it's a good thing. We should be tired at night, at the end of the day, when we lay down our body to sleep. Glory be to God. However, what I would say is that, that the enemy likes to get into our minds in various ways and to confuse us and to get us to think things that are not true. Now, the word of God is true. And we read in the scripture, let God be true and every man a liar. So everything that we hear, whether it comes from the voice of a friend or family member, or we see it online or we see it on the news, should always be held up to the perfect light of God's holy word to see whether or not these things be so. I want to give you an example, and this is a very real thing. So what I'm about to describe to you is happening right now. In the, the war against North Vietnam, the United States military, one of the things that they did in that battle was to drop papers on the en behind enemy lines where the North Korean soldiers were. And these papers contained propaganda. So this is a technique of warfare. That's not the only place where it happened. So anyway, these papers would say things in people's own language that would cause them to doubt what their military leaders told them to do, to fear being captured, to fear defeat. And in that way, that psychological weaponry caused their enemy to become weak. Verily I say unto you, the same thing is happening on the spiritual battle, battlefield that Christians are on. So the enemy has a very strong interest in convincing you of things that are not according to the word of God. And again, when we hear something, when we see something, when we think something, when we read something, when we see a video on YouTube or any of that, when we do a Google search, what we see needs to be held up to the perfect light of God's word because the word of God is true and the word of God says, let, let God be true and every man a liar. So someone might have really good intentions and be really smart, but that does not mean that what they're telling you is true. And even when we think we're telling the truth, we have to be careful that what we're saying is in accordance with the Holy Scripture. Hallelujah. So there are many things that cause a, the flesh of a human being to be tired. Things like work, things like having poisons uh, in their food or in their water or in their air, things like uh, stress, things like walking alone and having no one to help you carry your burdens, be they physical or emotional, sleeplessness, bad diet, aging, trauma, stress, disease, poor diet, and even things like sin. There are many, many things that can cause the flesh of a human being to be tired in ways that are not healthy and normal. Furthermore, these days we hear many other things, and we hear them as propaganda that is dropped behind enemy lines in a language that appeals to us. So say, for example, 
we are convinced that the news media is lying, the mainstream news media is lying, which it is. And so we seek for our news to be from some other alternative source. What I would say unto you this is that alternative sources often are far more reliable, but we, re, pardon me, reliable, but we still need to hold up what we're hearing and seeing there according to the light of scripture, because Satan, who runs the internet, is going to drop propaganda papers behind enemy li lines in a language that will appeal to you. And so some of the things that you might hear on alternative news sites are that you must avoid this or that thing at all costs. You can't go through airport security and be irradiated. You can't ever drink fluoride. You can't you can't ever be around people who have taken the you know what. You you have to fear things like the 5G tower. And then what will happen is you'll you'll hear those things and maybe you don't believe them, but you just hear them. But then you're walking around the next day and suddenly you get this bad headache and you think, oh, that's what it is. Well, maybe that is what it is. I'm not saying it isn't. But what I would say is this, is that as Christians, we're on a spiritual battlefield and we want to believe our master, the one who is running the show, the whole show, and we believe his word and not the ideas that come into our head through Google. And when we're considering these things, I offer these things to you because I know what this thing is. I'm a person too. I get these things put in my mind too. And, and what we want to do is we want to walk according to the word of God. And as disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, we want to recognize enemy propaganda when it comes into our head. So there are many weapons that can be formed against a human being. A sword, a bomb, fire, radiation, smoke, poison, 5G, radiation, scalar weapons, injected people who are walking around as disease factories. We've all heard these things and we all know these things, but verily I say unto you, there are all weapons and we want to understand what the word God has to say about weapons and God's people. So let's go to Isaiah 54. Now, before I read this to you, I want to say something. I am not saying that a sword is not a real thing. I am not saying that a bomb is not a real thing. And I am not saying that 5G or chemtrails or, or certain poisons in the water, in the air, or in people in our time are not real. But what is more real and what Christians abide in and have faith in above all else is the word of God. So let's read verse 17 of Isaiah 54. No weapon, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me. What this means is that, yes, someone can take a sword and stick it through me right now, and it probably would either kill me or greatly harm me. But when I'm walking by faith in the power of God, I don't need to fear that sword. Because as long as I have the righteousness of God in my life protecting me, the shield of righteousness, then no weapon formed against me shall prosper. So, you know, there are various things that we might believe, like we might believe that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. But then we forget 
the various weapons and particularly the psychological weaponry that exists in the world today in news media, uh, on the internet, and in the minds of the people around us who listen to the news media and are on the internet. So when something comes out of someone's mouth, even if they're a Christian, it doesn't mean that it's the word of God. They might be hearing something elsewhere, and while they might be a woman of God or a man of God, it doesn't mean that what they're speaking came from God. And we know that the word of God says, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. So, are we tired? Are we tired? Well, what do we do when we're tired? And this is very, very important. So I really want you to listen about this part. Let's go to Matthew chapter 11, starting in verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that, are lab that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This is Jesus Christ speaking. Jesus Christ is speaking the word of his Father. This is the word of truth and it is the Holy Spirit. Come unto me, all ye that, are, that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Now these words were spoken by the only begotten Son of God. And he was the one who cried at Gethsemane and asked his Father to take the cup from him, the cup of the cross, if it be possible. But nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. The sweat falling off of him was as great drops of blood. Did he suffer? Was he worried about facing the things that laid ahead? Did his flesh protest? Of course, of course. But where did he find the strength to then walk in obedience unto his father, even unto death and the death of the cross? because he was willing to obey his father and rest in his father's promises. He knew that the cross that laid before him was in between him and everlasting life. He knew that if he walked in faith and obedience unto the cross, that not only would he attain the heavenly inheritance, but so would all of his bride his people. He was laying down his life in obedience because his eyes were set on the kingdom. When we are scared, when we are worried, when we are overburdened, when we are stressed, when we have a headache, when we feel sick, when we feel tired, the answer is not to look around us and listen to what other people are saying about why that is happening. The answer instead is whatever we might think or hear or see, to bring those things before the living God. And come unto me, he says, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest and I will give you rest. You see, a Christian walks by faith, not by sight. A Christian trusts in the word of God. Let's go to Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Verse 17, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. 
So this means that we who are the heritage of the Lord, the servants of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we don't need to fear things that make other people sick. We don't need to fear things that are weapons formed against the people of this world. And it's not that those weapons might not affect us. It's that when we are walking by faith and not by sight, when we're relying on the Lord Jesus Christ, then we are protected. And the word of God is true. The promises of God are true. Let's go now to Matthew chapter 14. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 14. Hallelujah. And let's read here. Let's read here, uh, starting in verse 19. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven he blessed and brake and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitudes and they all did eat and they did all eat and were filled and they took up the fragments that remained 12 baskets full and they that had eaten were about 5,000 men besides women and children. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. My sisters, there are many things that we must do in this world. Physical work, caring for children, listening to people's sorrows, caring for our husband, caring for our house, attending to chores, to, to getting things in the house and so forth. Testifying of God's word to people who don't believe, who resist us, who accuse us, who attack us, walking in a world full of poisons, poisoned minds, poisoned bodies, weapons all over the place. On every street corner these days, there's a 5G tower. And sometimes we get tired. What is it that we do? This is what we do. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. You see, my sisters, there is a place of rest. There is a place of strength. We can always go before the throne of grace and lay our burdens down. Our worries, our fears, our difficulties, our burdens. And place them before the throne of grace and ask Jesus Christ to carry them. So when we're walking in a yoke, one thing about a yoke with animals, as it wasn't many times before our time, two animals would be yoked together to, to plow a field because with two, it made the burden far less. So in Matthew chapter 11, let's read about the yoke because when we are a Christian, we are yoked with Jesus. Jesus is the one that we are bound to. Verse 28, Come unto me, all that ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is what we do when we're tired. When we're tired, we don't do research on the internet or ask everybody about what, why we might be tired. 
we ask the Lord. We bring our burdens before the Lord. And when we, when we want to know what's going on, and verily there could be a lot going on, we seek him and he'll show us what it is and what we need to do about it. But verily I say unto you, the word of God is true. And where we find strength is in Jesus. I want to close now in Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Starting in verse 28. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Glory be to God. What I would say unto you, my sisters, is this, that when we are tired, we need to rest in the bosom of Jesus Christ. We need to abide in his word and seek his comfort there. Seek strength there. Seek truth there and believe the word of God and not the word of propaganda that the enemy has whispered in our ear. Because if you are a Christian, no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. And finally, what I want to say is this. There will come a time when you lose your life, whether it be for the sake of Jesus Christ through some kind of some kind of persecution, or whether it be just that you walked out your whole life and it's time to lay your body down. It doesn't matter. There is a time and a place for the flesh to end and the, and the eternal life to begin. But until that time, no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. And the Lord our God is with thee and will strengthen thee and will renew thy strength as the eagles. Praise be to God. I pray this message has helped you, my sisters, to evermore rely on the Lord. Not only are there poisons everywhere, poisonous people, poisonous air, poison, poisonous electromagnetic fields, poisonous radiation and food and water, but poisonous ideas. So let us evermore abide in the scripture, even as Jesus Christ commanded. Glory be to God. May the word of God go forth today and comfort many. In Jesus' precious name.